Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is part five of our interview with Mark Hunneman. He is an author and a deliverance minister. He helps people who need exorcism. Now, for part five, I don't know if we'll manage all of what we hope to talk about, but but let's introduce Mark to the show now. Hi, Mark. How are you? Laura, I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you. How about you? Yeah, it's it's good to have you back on on the show. Yeah, uh, it's always a delight. It really is. Can't believe this is number five again. Uh, it's <laughs> just so much to talk about, huh? There is, yeah. Um, so I thought today, um, we we discussed what we would talk about, and we hope to talk about um communication with angels, and mm. then we hope to go into the topic we've touched on a little bit before testing the spirits in Jesus name for their true identity we feel it's time to go into that deeper now yeah. um to to really get into that topic because we've only touched on the surface before and if we have time but we may not if we have time we want to talk about something that really is concerning us both um just now with a a well-known gentleman from the paranormal community Steve Huff, um, I believe he invented the EVP phone apps and we want to just um, share our heart about what that man has been going through. He's had such a hard time lately and we want to just um, touch on some of the issues that um, he has been sharing on Facebook and, and so on because we're really concerned and we would ask people to pray for him. Yes. Um. So... Mm. I thought that first I would start with a, a little quote I saw online. I don't know who wrote it, but it says this. So many are looking for special revelation from God while it sits on their shelves gathering dust. Now, you know, when I say that, I, I speak as, as a, a born-again Christian who, who does believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I do believe in you know, the gift of prophecy. Um, so I've certainly been in, in that position where I've sat in a meeting wondering if someone might prophesy to me special revelation, as it were, when my Bible's sitting at home. So please, when I say these things and when Mark says these things, we're not condemning people at all. We understand and we're just sharing our um, experiences and, and insight into these things. Um, so Mark... Could you please start off with um, the whole kind of a thing about Christians as well talking to angels? Actually, first, could I backtrack a second? Um, I think we mentioned in a previous show about Deuteronomy, the, the verses that, that do warn about uh, divination and uh, so on. And there was a word, the, the word familiar spirit, where it says, you know, don't contact familiar spirits. You were saying to me that in Hebrew, um, that word is actually means demons. It, it's uh, it's ob o b. Yeah, ob in the Hebrew. Actually, um, there are three very closely connected words there. You have ob. Then you have the word, Hebrew word for necromancy and then uh, attempting to communicate with uh, the dead. But speaking to your question about, oh, that, you know, people usually speak of the witch of Endor, but it's the medium of Endor. Mm -hmm. So it, language is fluid and it can mean, the word O means medium in that context, but what do mediums do? If you look in uh, that, the clearest example uh, in First Samuel twenty-eight, uh, what you have is is the is that the Ob is relying on her familiar spirit, 
And so in my research, looking through the Hebrew, my Hebrew Bible and my Hebrew word book, it, one of the main definitions of Ob was familiar spirit. So what you have is you have a medium who, of course, even today, they rely on their familiar spirit to, to function, mm-hmm. right? So that's how I uh, see that, that word in, in a nutshell. I'm not sure if that answers it, uh, your question. Yeah, and I think it, you know, it just it does show that whether it's a medium or a witch or a shaman or or, or whoever, or or Christians as well, if if they're in contact and receiving regular communication from whatever the entity claims itself to be, um, that it's a familiar spirit, in actual fact, and not um, the entity it says it is. Right, and then, and of course, the implication of familiar spirit for people who are not familiar with it is is uh, is that a familiar spirit is a demon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yep. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, and you know, I think as well that that question of just because we can do something, does it mean we should, or does mm. it mean it's safe? And I, I think with, for example, EVPs and so on. You know, there's an analogy there similar to the moral argument with with um, some things that scientists do, I suppose, just because we can do it doesn't mean we should. You know, the, the whole moral implications of it, um, I think, are quite interesting there as well. I think he raised a very, very, very good point, and that is just because we have developed technology to do something, doesn't mean that we should. It's an ethical issue. And, of course, there's medical ethics that are raging today uh, about this, that, and the other. Just because we can do thus and so, should we do it? And Mm -hmm. then when it comes to this particular issue, there's no real debate because the Bible says, you know, people were doing it Mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning of time, namely attempting to communicate with the dead. But we're told not to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's there's really not a debate. Uh, it's very clear. It's like this uh, neon billboard sign saying, no, do not attempt to communicate with the dead. Yep, absolutely. And um, also, you know, we feel that this is also the case with angels. And there's a lot of this, especially just now, even um, Christians who are writing books about contacting yeah. angels and um, giving messages to people from their angels or, or even having workshops for, for Christians to go along and um, basically communicate with their angel. Um, so we yeah. want to get into that too. So Mark, please um, start us off with, with that topic. You want to start talking about the, the, the angels? Yeah, well, you yeah. know, what, what, sure. you, what can you share about that? Yeah, great. Um, well, first off, that comes to my mind is that just how quickly it's become popular. You know, we've talked about the explosion of the fascination with the paranormal in the last 20 to 30 years. Well, the same um, has now included angels. And just just recently, that part has seemed to have mushroomed. Laura, I get two or three text, texts on my phone every day, um, not about horoscopes, uh, I get those as well, but about, re- would you like to get a reading from your personal guardian angel mm-hmm. type thing? Um, so it's, it's spread out all over the place, and like you, I'm concerned that people in churches who are particularly well-meaning because of the fact that these are angels are holy. Mm-hmm. And if there's any confusion in their mind, and, you know, about communicating with the dead because of what Scripture says, um, we do not have, and I will admit this, there is not an explicit, an explicit command like there is in Deuteronomy 18 and Leviticus 19 and 20, do not attempt communication with angels. However, um, there's implicit negations or prohibitions all over the place, and um, 
there's dangers attendant to that, stemming with, starting with, I would say, the warning in Second Corinthians 11 about Satan and by implication or inference, uh, his demonic followers can appear as an angel of light. And you know, there in certain circles, there there is like a seems like a revival going on uh, in in some Christian churches where the word is being preached and the Holy Spirit is being poured out. But as I was talking with you earlier, um, one of my heroes, Jonathan Edwards, who God used to spearhead the first and second great awakenings mm-hmm. in the seven hundreds. He, he warned, and he was a great student of what happened in, in, in true outpourings of the Holy Spirit, true revivals. And he was, God, like I said, used him in, in, in his preaching. However, he warned that, that with every true revival, whether it's in just one church or in a broader area, you have to be careful because mm-hmm. the devil hates that, and he's going to, in any way possible, Laura, insert himself um, by bringing in false signs and wonders, false messages, any way that he can stick his his ugly, rear his ugly head in there um, by making himself beautiful mm-hmm. and, to, and, and appear. And as we know, we... We're, we're really drawn to the sensational. If someone says, I have a word from the prophet Isaiah, mm-hmm. um, you know, people's ears are going to perk up. Yeah. Or, you know, I have a, a word from Charles Spurgeon. You know, if somebody thinks about their favorite preacher down through the age of St. Augustine, uh, Martin Luther or something like that, He's coming through me, um, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. That's, or our topic being an angel. An angel is here present with us and wants to communicate. Um, someone who is very well-meaning, but not... I, mean, I think there's a lot of people who know a lot of Scripture, but just this topic just hasn't been addressed very much. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, it's, mm-hmm. it's usually the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's encouraging people to communicate with their guardian angels. But the problem is that um, there's, um, if I may go into to, to as far as um, what the Bible has to say about that, first of all, we know that... Um, that they are our servants. And as fascinated as we are with angels, they're more fascinated with us, really. Um, you know what the first lie of was this, of, of Satan was in the garden? And we all know what it was. You know, you're going to be like gods, right? Mm-hmm. And that that's really at the heart of the New Age or neo-Gnostic uh, lie that's taken hold. And, and Satan has used that um, and it's at the heart of the occult worldview. But God in his infinite wisdom has confounded Satan at every step. Every time, Laura, he attacks God or his, his, his bride, he always has confounded and confused Satan because not, we're not only, we're, we're not just gods with little g. God had the last laugh. Christians, too, because we're in union with Christ. We, as as Peter says, we are partakers of the divine nature. We're in union with the God Man, so we we are higher than Satan could ever, in his stupidity, try to lure Adam and Eve into. Mm-hmm. So you see what I'm saying? Is is the yeah. glory of being a Christian is much higher than what Satan was trying to um, tempt Adam and Eve into. Um, of course, we're, we're not gods. We never will be. And when we die, we won't become angels. We'll always be human beings. Um, that's one thing I wanted to make sure I said was that I think there's a pretty common idea that if we die and go to heaven that we turn into angels and watch over our loved ones. Well, that's, that's not true. Angels and human beings are, have been and always will be two distinct creations of God. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'll stop there for a second. 
um, before I, I, I go into what the New Testament has to say about communication and so forth. Yeah, and Could I'd you- just like to comment on what you were saying about um, false signs and wonders can happen even in a genuine move of God. And, you know, I've, I've been a Christian now 20 plus years and I've been in some meetings myself over the years where, where things like that have happened where they are men and women of God. Yeah. Um absolutely, you know, they, they, they do know the Bible, they are used of God and, and but yeah, sometimes, you know, errors have, have slipped in. And again this is not to condemn people. We see it all through the Bible, you know, God was often warning his people that, that this could happen, Old Testament and New. Um, you know, and I have been in meetings where um the, the the speaker would would say that that you know there are actually there there is a a dead preacher here um and he's um really uh-huh, wow. you know and, and he's saying you know you're on the verge of revival in your country etc cetera, etc cetera, and, and he's and he's saying basically he'd be saying things that were godly um and obviously it's an atmosphere where 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 all the christians are gathered they're worshiping god it's a, it's an anointed atmosphere um, so, you know, you would maybe think, well, if that was a demon, why would he not scream then? The name of Jesus is being mentioned. Um, mm. But mm. that's what I was saying about testing the spirits. There can be deeper levels of it. And if we actually allow um, error to come in and and believe this as, as a real dead preacher or, or a real godly angel... You know, the Bible does say that when we get deceived, that our consciences get seared, we, we can fall into more deception. And these beings can tell us even very godly stuff. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's really sad because it's not consistent with what the Bible says or, or in some meetings where Christians feel angels are turning up and tickling everyone. Um, <laughs> to, right. You know, to make everyone feel joy or, fe- you know, it's like, okay, it sounds nice and we're in the atmosphere of Jesus, so it must be okay, but it's not consistent with the biblical canon. It, you know, it's not consistent with what right. happened through the Bible. Jesus and the disciples didn't say they were getting messages from dead famous preachers, Isaiah or whatever. And, you know, they certainly didn't have angels turning up tickling people. So testing the spirit uh. is testing it with what the Bible says as well and the consistency of the Bible. And as you said, the, the ultimate test is where the Bible does say, don't go looking for contact with spirits. You know, don't initiate contacting your guardian angel or so on. That is the ultimate test. But if we do that, we have opened ourselves to the deception. Right, Laura. Let me back up for a second, if I mm-hmm. may. Yep. Remember, remember your comment about um, we were, when we were talking earlier about though the content may be entirely true mm-hmm. um, that's coming through. You mentioned something about the identity being the identity of the um, of the inspiring spirit uh-huh. behind the prophet being a lie. Yeah. Remember, he said, I thought that was profound. Oh, yeah, when we were off air. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, when we were off air, we were chatting, and um, I was saying that, again, I always tend to say to people, test the Spirit, test the Spirit in Jesus' name. And I'm aware that I'm giving only a very, I'm touching that topic on the very surface, and it needs a deeper deeper, um, analysis because explanation some people will do that they will test the spirit in jesus name and yes the spirit will immediately turn into its true form of being a demon and the person finds out really quick others it takes a a, a further and a deeper testing of it like really going into um the bible with with this entity and questioning it and questioning it and sometimes they will slip up and you'll see the lies start to come out other times it's it's almost as if the test doesn't work in the sense of and I think it's just because God has warned us not to do it but if we will go and do it anyway then he'll let us be deceived um, and, and the analogy I was thinking of was you know imagine there's a bomb ticking away and imagine the Bible said to you you know don't go near that ticking bomb 
But you went and did it anyway because you thought, okay, well, I'll just test it out. Maybe it'll be okay. Maybe it won't. <laughs> but, you know, just if you test it out and, and maybe it won't explode, but at the end of the day, God said not to do it. And although nothing bad might seem to happen to you, or as we said, all the communication given to you seems perfectly scriptural, the actual entity itself is lying. It's lying about its identity. It might tell you a whole lot of biblical truth, but right. it's lying about its identity. So you have entrusted yourself and, and your, your friends to communicating from this demon that although it might not even tell you many lies, it itself is a demon and you don't know the spiritual effect that is having on you and, and your friends. Apart from that, it is keeping you away from your main calling and destiny in God. You know, if, if, if you're, especially as it can be addictive as well, if you're contacting so-called angels or dead people and that's not what God wanted for you, your real destiny has been lost basically because you've been doing this and that is the tragic mm. thing. Um, I so want people to, to see that and, and to come out of that, to repent and be cleansed and find their true destiny in God. Um, yeah, but well, thank you. Yeah, the, that was um, that was really helpful. I appreciate it. It was the the main thing I wanted people to. Wait, well, I'm sorry. No, please go. Well, on. The, the main thing I was um, okay. The main thing I wanted people to see was that um, the though the message um, being given through this prophet in the church, mm -hmm. uh, maybe every word is biblical. Mm -hmm. The, the identity of the inspiring spirit is itself a lie. Yeah. And I thought that was a profound comment that you made, uh, to me in our, our, uh, pre prior conversation to uh, getting on the show. Um, if I may back up for a second, mm -hmm. um, you know, you did allude to this, but I think there might be kind of an unconscious um, sense in, in a Bible-believing church that if you're preaching the Word and relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, that, that you're safe mm -hmm. and that there's like a canopy over you and that while you're in worship and you're in union with the, um, with the heavenly angels while you're worshiping in church and so on, that you know nothing the devil can't tempt you but really the the, the 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 devil is going to go after the most godly biblical churches and pastors more than anyone else mm -hmm. and when the most powerful movements of the holy spirit are going on that's when we can't let our guard down that's when we most have that's when we have to be most discerning uh, and alert mm -hmm. um, because the devil is a prowling lion and he can and we've seen from church history and in scripture that right in the midst of godly revival uh, we there there will be um, attempts by the evil one to derail it by getting people overly emotional or focusing on the effects instead of God's beauty and glory. And um, again, Edwards had a real astute analysis of that. But if we're getting back, we, um, we had a conversation uh, back and forth with uh, a gentleman on YouTube, and he brought some interesting uh, comments to help us both think through what our ideas of angelic um, communication and so forth uh, clarified, I should say, mm -hmm. and the someone will say, "Well, why shouldn't we talk with angels? We're, we're not, you know, we're not told to." And we see in the Bible where you have Zechariah talking with angel, you have Mary, of course, talking with Gabriel. Mm -hmm. um, you have Peter getting struck on the side and being brought out of the um, um, out of the jail, and of course you have the angels at the empty tomb communicating um, with Peter and John, you know, and the, and the women, you know, he is risen. However, mm -hmm. however, my, my, Laura's and my main point is this, and please, if we say, say anything regarding angelic communication, I think this is the most important thing, 
You will search in vain through the book of Acts as well as the Gospels. Heck, from Genesis to Revelation, you will not find one instance of a godly man or woman initiating, keyword, initiating communication with angels. Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll find communication from angels sent by God to us, especially at, at key points of redemptive history, namely the first coming of Christ. That was an accelerated time of angelic communication. Angels still just as active today, obviously. However, once again, the silence not of the lambs, <laughs> but the, the silence of God's people. I guess it is. Right? The silence of <laughs> God's people, especially, especially the apostles, not once, not once do we see them ever attempting to initiate communication with angels. And yet we're having seminars and so forth and books being written on precisely doing that, initiating communication with angels. Mm -hmm. And that's where Laura and I have seen that there's, just because the Bible doesn't explicitly come out and say, do not communicate with angels, you can, the Bible teaches in different ways. And this is when you can read the entire book of Acts and all four Gospels, and it really, again, from Genesis to Revelation, and there's not a single incident in which a human being initiating a communication with angels, that is a clear message to us that we must not initiate communication with angels, especially in light of the fact that we know, we know that Satan can appear as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, communication, initiating communication with angels may not be, it may not be worship in a technical sense, but God's not pleased when we attempt to go around him to try to get guidance. It's kind of like astrology uh -huh. in a sense because God gave us the, the greater light and the lesser light, the sun and the moon. You know, we just had the eclipse on the 21st here, and that was that was beautiful display of God's glory. Um, but God gave us those it's his sun, it is his moon, and he gave those to us to, for him to enjoy and for us to enjoy, but for us to look horoscopically, so to speak, for them, for guidance, um, that is an offense to God because it's his creation, and we're supposed to look to the creator for our guidance and our wisdom in everyday life and our dealings with our job and our family and relationships, you know, all the things people go to for, for their horoscope and so forth. So the same thing goes with angels. Um, that would that would offend not only the angels, but more God, that we would look to a creature for wisdom about, that, say, the spirit realm, because I would assume that the reason why a lot of people communicate with angels is in part is to try to learn about the spirit realm. Um, people are doing AVPs now with what they consider to be angels, mm -hmm. and and uh, they're saying that uh, they have to be angels because they're talking about the gospel and um, how they want to lead people out of hell and how they want to see people saved and all that. But that just goes to what you said earlier, that um, Satan is very, and his demons are very adept at being biblical preachers, mm -hmm. but the very, their very identity is a lie. Yeah. So they're, they're, the motive behind saying these words is um, diabolical because they're getting people to bypass God and to go through part of his creation namely angels, mm -hmm. to communicate with, and that's a sin. But again, I would just go back to this. You, you will look in vain in the book of Acts or elsewhere to see an incident in which a godly man or woman initiated 
key word, initiated the communication with angels. I said this in one context um, in which Laura and I were communicating with someone and they apparently didn't pick up on the word initiated and they brought out all these examples of where, you know, in the Gospels there was communication between angels and humans and we're not denying that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Particularly then, the angels, the angels, but the angels initiated that. Yeah. Um, my point was simply that there's no instance in the New Testament of humans initiating communication. And I'm sorry for um, I've just learned, I guess, that I need to say it more than once sometimes for either me to, to, to hear it or for others as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, as you say, the, the key word is initiate, and we're not, we're not denying that angels do uh, serve, serve God by helping us and by sometimes appearing and giving, giving us um, information. It's happened through the Bible. It happens today. Um, but the key word is initiate um, because, uh, you know, I guess it's like if if we just uh, try to contact an angel, anything can will 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 we'll hear our our hearts cry and jump in there and start to yeah. communicate with us. Um, we don't initiate contact with the angels; it's them who um, speak to us when God sends it. And I, I think as well. Um, Why would somebody want to talk to an angel when they can talk to God? I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm, I'm just baffled. Why would someone want to talk to an angel? I, I suppose because it sounds it sounds a kind of a wonderful experience. But I, I think yeah. that you know, um, it is a it is like divination. It is like looking for guidance and seeking information. When in actual fact, the Holy Spirit that is His job. Yeah. To, Amen. To, if you know we get close to God, read the Bible, get close to God and the Holy Spirit, we don't need to ask angels anything. You know, the Holy Spirit is is meant to be our our guide. So it's almost as if we're replacing a relationship with God by um, wanting to talk to angels or the dead. Instead, that's very good, very well said. It's like if if, for example, um, those who say an angel appears every day to talk to them or once a month to talk to them well I would say you know it's kind of a seems to me like that angel's trying to replace p- replace the, the place of God it's for God to talk to you on a daily basis you know the Holy Spirit um, mm-hmm. and I think again it can be addictive and people can form a dependence upon this entity and you know um we're not to form a dependence on a, any anyone, not even our pastor or, or our Christian friends. Our dependence yeah. should be on God alone. Um, and I think these things will, will just make folks' attention go to information from these entities instead of really growing their, their relationship with God. And even if they don't, even if they try, you know, kind of a keep it in balance, as it were, it's still at the end of the day a demon and you just don't know the effects that that is having um, on your soul, your health, you know, problems yeah. in your health that can come along because this has actually cursed you. It's a curse that comes upon yes, you yes. when when you talk to demons, basically. I can uh, uh, piggyback on that. I, I say this with, with uh, all the tenderness and, and humility of my heart from both Laura and I that we we know from from God's word that if you are allegedly communicating with angels you are in fact speaking with demons mm-hmm. and the same is true if you're thinking you think you're talking with human spirits but since we're talking about angels in this show if you're communicating with an alleged angel it's not an angel it's a demon now that may sound arrogant of me um, to speak with such, um, I guess, force and certitude. But I've, I've learned over the years, y'all, that uh, it's, it's not an act of humility to back down from stating something gently but firmly if the Bible is clear on it. Um, the Bible, the Holy Spirit is not a... Is not a 
a skeptic, as some people would say. Mm -hmm. He's the spirit of truth. And when he makes something clear, then it's actually an act of humility to proclaim it, to proclaim the truth lovingly, but not with all these, you know, constant pr provisos with this is my opinion and I think it's this. No, we can come out and say, I know it's a demon. Why? Because God has said so. Mm -hmm. You know, God said it, that settles it, and I believe it. And um, so it's really not an act of arrogance on our, on our part to, to speak with, um, with boldness on this issue, hopefully with a, um, the, the love and the, and the winsomeness and the love of Christ comes through as well. But, you know, there's objective truth um, in the world, and that's found in God's Word. And we're kind of like, kind of like fish in, in in water. You know, you get so used to it, you don't even know you're in water. And we're in a culture swimming around in which the notion of truth has been turned on its head. And wittingly or unwittingly, and most often unwittingly, people have bought into the notion that truth is subjective and um, relative. And um, but the Bible is not. It's true truth, as Francis Schaeffer used to say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank God, because he started off this um, interview by talking about um, dusting off the Bible, you know, God's revelation to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are to seek to see all of reality um, through his eyes. And we're talking about angels here. They would be aghast. They would be totally aghast, Laura, at any attempts for us to glorify them by focusing on them. They are, quote, shy in that regard. They deflect everything. I mean, like you said, the Holy Spirit is, is the agent of the Trinity by which we um, are guided, blessed, led, etc., by God himself. Mm -hmm. So why in the world would we want to talk to an angel, even a holy angel? It it just does not make sense. Mm -hmm. And then once again, and I realize I'm, I'm I'm repeating myself, but you're looking. There is not an instance in the Bible where there's human initiation and in communicating um, with angels, and surely that's very instructive to us today. Um, and please take that to heart, please. Yeah, and I think even just, you know, in some of the anecdotal experiences that, that we've heard folks have, you know, as I say, I'm aware that some Christians feel they have angels that talk to them even on a daily basis, and they'll say, but they never, you know, they never slip up, they never tell lies, or they never say anything um, that isn't biblical. Um, but again, I would say, well, okay, you could put up with that for, what, the next 20, 30 years and wait to see if it eventually slips up and tells a lie and shows you its <laughs> true identity. But by then, my goodness, you've been talking to a demon intimately for 30 years. It's The thought oh, of gosh. that is just, is just, to me, just horrific. And sometimes, oh, yes. or they'll say, well, it, it's never attacked me. Like you talk about, Laura, I've never been... Uh, abused or, or violently attacked by this angel or dead person. Again, they don't always do that. Sometimes no. they do it because no. I think they just can't resist it. But sometimes they they kind of a bite their lip and and just say a lot of nice stuff. Um, whatever, whatever best. Um, of course, they're under orders, just as as holy angels are under orders by God. Um, uh, Satan is Satan is brilliant, and uh, he knows that that not attacking uh, is uh, is sometimes the, the wisest um, wisest approach as far as long term spreading of the kingdom. It, the, the term I've used with you and I've uh, written some blogs on it is what I call a happy haunt. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like contradiction in terms, in the sense it is, but. There are many people who have had traffic with, with demons, and for many years, um, yeah, there, there hasn't been any observable problems, mm -hmm. but, you know, the, the, the soul, the invisible, um, the, the impact that this, day, this regular traffic communication with the demons, how that's affecting 
a person's relationship with Christ and in bending their heart away, not to mention their children and grandchildren, they're bending their hearts away from Christ and introducing um, ideas like, well, all religions are true, you know, true, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, um, I wonder if this is a logical place to kind of bring in, um, uh, going in more detail um, about uh, discernment. I know you touched on that um, in, in a pretty pretty good way earlier, but... Um, Absolutely. First, can I just say that, you know, yeah, angels do help us, and, and they're probably always there helping us, um, but... Again, the biblical record doesn't show um, contact with them initiated by us or regular contact with them either. Um, it just doesn't happen. And again, I think that people who do EVPs um, to, to try and communicate with Yeah, even the apostles, the angel, even the apostles didn't have regular... Yeah. yeah, you know, people who are doing EVPs, obviously they're looking for, for angels to contact them. But... Why? Because we know they're there. God has said they're there. They're protecting us. They're helping us share the gospel. We really don't need to be contacting them. And I think it's just that human part that, that just wants that um, communication. But it's not actually necessary. If if God wants an angel to, to turn up and warn you about something, for example, no, he, it's will, not. he will and, uh, send you, you it. You mentioned two things. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Um, and even that, we still have to test it anyway. Uh, even right. if you're in the best Christian church in the US or the UK and an angel turns up, you've still got to test it and see, um, you know, if it truly is of God. But yeah, please continue with what you were saying. Well, we, you know, again, we, we had a really enlightening discussion uh, before we, we got online about how... You know, we, we, we frequently talk about rebuking spirits in the name of Jesus to reveal their true identity mm -hmm. and how we've come to realize uh, that um, we need to go into a little more detail because yeah. um, there's there are some issues that that make it necessary for us to clarify. And I'm mm -hmm. going to kind of defer to you, Laura, because I... Well, I'd, I'd just like to. I think you're you're very well spoken and knowledgeable about this. Well, I think you are too, Mark. Um, but 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 yeah, I think you know the whole thing about testing the spirits. As I say, we've only touched on it uh, a little bit before. Some people can test a spirit in Jesus' name, and immediately it screams and, and shows its true identity. Others can um, challenge it with all sorts of truths of the Bible, and it will agree again and again and again and mm -hmm. therefore you just assume well here yeah, it must be you know it's agreed with everything i've said um yeah. it's even wanting to help spread the gospel it must be an angel but yeah um, right. that's the, confusing you know in the context of testing the spirits the ultimate test really is an actual fact the bible itself um and just obeying what the bible says i.e don't initiate contact with entities. That yes, is the yes. ultimate ultimate test. Like as I said earlier, if there's a ticking bomb, and if God told you don't go near that mm. ticking bomb, but you go near it anyway because you're testing the bomb, you don't need to test it. The the there's test gonna is there's going to be consequences. There's going to be consequences to to doing that. Mm -hmm. right? It's like you don't even need to. The test is actually irrelevant. The the main thing is obeying what the bible said that is the the ultimate test if you like um right. and if we go out from that and, and we do it anyway then we are opening ourselves to errors and the bible does say you know if we open ourselves to errors if if we um go that way then we will be deceived obviously by his grace he is there to to forgive us and, and cleanse us um once we repent if we realize well suppose you have someone I have I have one scenario here. Um, again, I, I say this with a mm, uh, a tender heart, mm -hmm. but Jesus states very clearly that that not all who call upon me are are truly born again, 
And he, he says very clearly that, that narrow is the way that leads to life, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, um, and so on. And mm-hmm. so, the inference, and this has always been the case through, throughout 2,000 years in New Testament church history, is that, um, yeah, this agrees me to say this, but the majority of people who profess to be Christians are not. Um, that's just simply what Christ makes clear. And it breaks my heart to see that mm-hmm. or to know that to be the case. Uh, I don't know. Who, only God knows who who who's real, who's not. Um, all I know is there's a lot of f- false ways of people thinking that they are certainly Christians um, when those aren't the, the indicators that the Bible gives. And the, the chief one to me, as far as if someone's a real Christian, is, you know, do they have a, a real love for the, for the beauty of Christ? Um, is, there, is there genuine affection mm-hmm. in the soul for the, the beauty of Christ and for um, his atonement on the cross? and gratitude for all that he's done in creation and redemption Mm -hmm. and not all these sensational things that we may do for him and so forth but the thing that um, concerns me is that if the fact that a lot of people could I mean, we all stumble, right? Mm -hmm. We all sin. And in my tradition, we all have what is called a besetting sin, a particular sin that just kind of harasses us, you know? Um, Not demonically, but it's just kind of a Mm -hmm. thorn of flesh type thing. Mm -hmm. But but nevertheless, Laura, it's it's, it's puzzling me that if Scripture would be so clear that folks would still do EVPs with uh, alleged dead people or with angels, Um, I realize that part of that may be um, due to a defective view of um, the role of the Old Testament law, and we addressed that last week, hopefully, Mm -hmm. uh, to people's uh, persuasion. Um, But if somebody, you know, it's like in Psalm 119, the writer of that was in love with God's law. And another sign of being regenerate, truly regenerate, is just a childlike love. For God's word, and I'm not going to be super spiritual and say that every time I pick up the Bible, I get chills and all that. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I, I can honestly say I love God's word. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is sweeter than honey. And so, if people can take Deuteronomy 18, look at it where it says, "Don't communicate with the dead," and this just keep doing it, it makes me wonder if they're even regenerate. Um, but we know that we all stumble, but. I guess I'm getting to the point, Lord, to what I'd like for you to talk about is, so what happens if a true Christian, I mean, a really regenerate Christian, disobeys God's law and how that affects the, the, the normal way that we think of for testing the spirits? What happens in that scenario? You follow me? Um, well, I think that, Someone, um, whether they're a true Christian or whether they're not, even even a Christian, yes, can be deceived and and start to think they're talking to angels or dead people when actually it's a demon, because the 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 Bible's clear we can be deceived by by lots of different things and and by sin, and we have free will. We can certainly go and do these things. Um, God isn't going to stop it automatically to protect us because he's warned us about it um so what sorry what did you ask well the issue remember we've talked a lot about how just just the power of saying in the name of jesus um i rebuke you and that will either cause the demon to leave if a person's being attacked or if the issue is the identity of the presenting spirit we have on numerous occasions said, in the name of Jesus, reveal your true identity. And we've kind of just left it at that. Mm -hmm. But you and I have both talked recently about how there's some situations 
where maybe um, we need to go in a little more detail. For example, if a person is systematically disobeying, yep. you mentioned this, disobeying God's law, well, how does that affect or compromise the spiritual authority? You catch my drift? Yeah, well, it's like I say, uh, you know, I've known even very godly, very lovely Christians who believe that um, dead preachers are, are with them giving messages to the congregation mm-hmm. and, and so on. Um, mm-hmm. So have they tested it? But it is the question. But I think the ultimate test is they could test it and it will still say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with Jesus. The ultimate test is actually the Bible says just don't do it. Right. That is right. the ultimate test. So my point is this test we often say advising people to do, yes, it can fail. The test itself can fail because if you have deliberately um, disobeyed God's commands in that in that area, then yeah, you are, you are free. You you have free will. You are free to go and be deceived by it and be cursed by it. Have your health affected? Your children affected? The ultimate test itself isn't even test the spirit in Jesus' name. It is actually what God says. Don't don't do it. That's um, that's profound because I so, don't think so. My point ever is that, that yeah. No, the the point is basically yes, the test can fail because you're trying to test test God, as it were. You're trying to test God. There's no need to test God. The Bible already says what we've to do. About it. Oh, that that's an excellent point. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of using the word test in different ways, but it's it's um. Mm-hmm. God does not, you know, God does not want us to test him. Um, He wants us to trust him, but not test him. And to expect, if we Uh disobey, and if we disobey God regarding a serious, grievous sin, and and, and occultic sin, Deuteronomy 18, we've talked about gradations of sin and attempting to communicate with angels or or the deceased, is a serious sin with God, Mm -hmm. in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why these, the the, the, the cultures were being destroyed. Now, that compromises, it seems to me, it would compromise that person's spiritual authority Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, if they were a Christian, seriously compromise them. And you made, I think, a very um, good point regarding um, you, it's testing God because you're breaking breaking the law and then turning around and asking God to protect you mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. get rid of the very thing that you have continually brought in yourself. Yeah, and, it's, it's almost like, a, 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 this is a, a, a blatant analogy, but it's just because I can't think of mild analogies. It's almost like saying, hey, I think I'll go to a really evil satanic meeting uh, get involved with guys, call up some demons, have some fun, and then uh, God will protect me because I'm a Christian. Well, no, you're testing God. He said, don't do these things. That is the ultimate test. And probably using the word test isn't the best word. Maybe I should just say, rebuke them in Jesus' name. Get rid of them um, because they're demons, basically. Oh, my, we have two minutes left, Mark. Uh, We wanted to talk about our concerns for a dear gentleman, Steve Huff in the paranormal community, but I think we'll have to come back and do part six. So could you please, in the two minutes, um, just remind people of of where to get your book and then pray for our dear audience. Yeah, thank you very much again, Laura. This has been a a delight again. Um, If you're interested in learning more about how to think with the Christian worldview and also my analysis of, of, um, uh, of, of ghosts being demons, science, logic, and of course God's words all converge. Uh, my book is Seeing Through God's Eyes. And you can get it um, uh, through Amazon. And I, w- I appreciate you checking it out. Thank you. And of course, please check out Laura's, all of her, her works. And um, let's pray, shall we? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we bow before you, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the communion, uh, the joyful um, communication and interpersonal relationship between the persons of the Trinity is just a beautiful thing to, to think about and to know that 
to know that you, you the Almighty, all knowing, um, everywhere present God, that you love us that enough to send your Son to die for us and take our sins upon us and the punishment for us. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for your word, which gives us clear guidance as to how to please you. Um, and we pray specifically that the words that were spoken today regarding angelic communication, um, that you would, the seeds would find fertile ground in the folks who hear it, that you would bring the people of your choice to hear it, and that you would, by your Holy Spirit, uh, maximize the effectiveness of, of this interview. Uh, Lauren and I don't seek any glory for ourselves. We no. really desire that the Lord Jesus would be lifted up. But we thank you for this time, and um, which is thank you for the privilege of being your, your daughter and your son and to, to know the truth and to, and to share it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. And thank you, listeners. And please mm -hmm. tune in again next time. God bless you. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio.